I'd like to call the March 14, 2022 Greensland County School Board meeting to order. Clerk, can we get a roll call? Chairman Jason Rook. Here. Vice Chairperson Janet Roberts. Here. Attorney Rhonda Jones Gilliam. Here. Mr. Rustin Jesse. Here. All right, you can bow your head for the invocation. Father, we ask for your blessing over our students, staff, and faculty. Father, give us the strength, wisdom, and knowledge to make signs and decisions for what's best for our school division. Father, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, at this time we're going to open up the public hearing for the 2022-23 draft budget. My name is Jason Rook, chairman of the school board. And for the purpose of this public hearing is to discuss the 2022-2023 draft budget. Citizens will be provided an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. The chairman is responsible for the orderly conduct of the hearing and shall rule on matters as such as appropriateness and length of time. Three minutes will be allocated per citizen to present questions. No one will be allowed to ask additional questions until everyone has an opportunity to speak. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. I'd like to say good evening, everybody. Good evening. And this is, I'd like to thank um, the board for allowing me to present what we are calling our fiscal year 2023 draft uh, proposal budget. Okay? Well, I guess I'm... Next week. I'd like to start with what I expected rather than this um, for the 2023 school year. Our projected revenue for the 2023 school year, we're looking at 242000 that's our projected revenue. Let, let me, can everyone hear me okay? I'm going to get this microphone. I'm pretty sure that's even better, right? Okay. This is what our projected revenue is for the fiscal 2023 school year. And that's our local and, and, and miscellaneous funds. And as you can see, for our state funding, funding is $20,951,000. 893. Out of that, our school nutrition program, which is an enterprise within itself, is 1,695,218. On the federal side, which incorporates all of our Title 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 6B, is 8,837,420. Our current, current county contribution is $6,083,000. 6,083,318 dollars, and on the city, 4,105,491, which is a total projected revenue of 41,915,840 dollars. Now, this is what our projected revenue is for the fiscal year that's upcoming, 2023. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, on our projected revenue side, when you look at where the majority majority of the funding is coming from, it's state, and it's broken down into our city contribution, county contribution, local, federal, and also our food services. As I stated, school nutrition is an enterprise within itself. Also, I'm using the American Rescue Plan. Now, under President Trump, it was called the CARES Act. Under President Biden, it's called the American Rescue Plan. We in Greensville County Public Schools have received three rounds of ESSER funding. Three rounds of ESSER funding. Um, we've totally expended all of our ESSER one funds. So when you look at fiscal year 23, what do we have under the American Rescue Plan revenue? We have 1,602,640, 640, 
and those funds must be expended by 9-30-2023. Now, ESSA 3, we were just awarded, and we certainly thank the team and all of our schools for the hard work they did, and our ESSA 3 funding, we have $7,440,885. Those funds must be spent by September the 30th, 2024. And in ESSA 3, we had to set aside funding. The funding that was set aside was $890,770. Also, learning loss. Coming off of COVID, we set aside funds as well in the amount of $1.4 million for learning loss. $1.4 million in ESSA 3. We've done a lot of work, and I take my hat off to all, especially our maintenance department, our finance department, our custodial staff, and anyone that had a hand in working with the HVAC component and our partners at Honeywell. We have outfitted the schools, and right before we opened school, the high school was under a major renovation project to make sure the air quality was good here at the high school, as well as all of our other schools. That was 424,770 with a local match. And that was for the high school and also at the elementary school. Now, for our fiscal 2023 20, budget, we included 5,700,000 of the ESSA funds. And ESSA stands for Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Money in Revenue. And those funds were utilized for the above projects with the HVAC. Proposed expenditures for fiscal year 2023. Now, our current fiscal ADM, and, and I really want everyone to pay attention to our current ADM. We in Greensville County Public Schools, we have experienced student enrollment over 2,000 for numerous of years. But what are we experiencing now? We're experiencing declining student enrollment. Now, students were displaced due to COVID, and we are trying, as you know, work on a chronic absenteeism that we have currently in the division. So our current fiscal ADM is 1,948, 49. But, however, we are waiting for the final numbers, and they will be given to us after March the 31st. The numbers that you are seeing they are reported on our fall SRC report. For fiscal year 23, we are building this budget on 1,900 students. Let me say that again. We are building this budget on 1,900 students, and this is the first time we built the budget with less than 2,000 in quite some time, if ever. Now, on the county, we're looking at 1,117, and for the city, 783, and those two figures combined give us the total of 1,900. And again, we are facing student decline here in Greensville County Public Schools. We're still waiting for the governor's proposed budget, but in the governor's proposed budget, there is a 5% salary increase that is proposed, and what we at Greensville County Public Schools are hoping to achieve is to get the 5% salary increase plus a step. 5% salary increase plus a step. Now, when you look at the salary update, a key factor is waiting on the governor's budget. And of course, it's a biennial budget, but once we get that, we can plug the numbers in and update what our salaries would look like. And when you look at the expected costs in the revenue, we break it down instruction, administration, transportation, operations and maintenance, technology, school food, which is a total $1,239,390. And once again, we are still waiting on that budget. So what are the highlights of the fiscal year 23? We are seeking a 5% step Increase for all staff. Also, we are seeking 
$2,691,348 for school construction as awarded from the state funding. And our possible uses that we discuss, HVAC, adding on additional wings, and finishing up our component of air quality here in Greensville County Public Schools. Also, the 10.5% renewal increase on health care plays a major factor. Our health insurance is going up 10.5. So now when you look at proposing a salary increase of 5%, but however, the health care is going up 10.5%. And that would that cost would approximately be two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Now, to all the employees in Greensburg County Public Schools, it has been truly phenomenal that of that cost, the division pays eighty five percent of the insurance. Eighty five percent of the insurance is paid by Greensburg County Public Schools, and approximately fifteen percent is paid by the employees. So when you have that wonderful insurance card in your pocket, if you are from Greensville County Public Schools, that is the component that the division pays for versus what our employees pay for. It's an 85-15 rule. And we're gonna to have to take a look at that in the microscope. We're gonna to continue to use the American Rescue Plan funding and also the funds available if approved by the Senate. But a big piece is the component when you break down talking about $2 million in possible construction funds. Now, why is that so significant for us here in Greensville County Public Schools? If you look at the high school here, it's over 70 years old. If you look at Belfield Elementary, it's over 70 years old. So these funds will significantly help us here in Greensville County Public Schools. The total proposed increase for the fiscal year 2023 and the required local match increase is $205,789. And the remaining request of $32,183 to cover the expense of also the step increase and the 10.5% for the insurance for a total of $237,972, which is what we will be asking and seeking from our appropriating bodies. Our projected operating categorical expenses under instruction, 29,403,985. On the administration side, 1,607,701. Pupil transportation, 1,839,710. On operation and maintenance, 5,623,723. Technology, 1,119,475. Our school food, 1,695,218. And debt services. And we took some debt off of the books and had it refinanced, which gave us a tremendous saving. And so our debt services right now is 864,000, which is down from 1.2 million. For a total categorical expense of 42 million, 100. 523.812. The percentage of the funding, 69% in instruction, debt services 2%, child nutrition 4, technology 3%, operations and maintenance 13%, transportation 4%, and administration 4%. And administration is central services. What's that final number? There's too many numbers. In there. I'm sorry. There's too many numbers in the 42 million. You talking about the previous slide, right, Ms. Jones? Thank you. She, oh. she cleared it up. Okay. Thank you so much. We got too many numbers there. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm.
When you look at our revenue and expenditures, Ms. Barber, I call you forward to introduce this slide. On this slide, you'll see the breakdown from our local, state, and federal um, revenues. You'll see that we put the fiscal year 22 up there so that you can see last year's comparison. We have about $30,031,813 coming from our local, state, and federal um, expenditures. Our school food service category is kind of a standalone body, and they bring in $1,695,218 with a total of $31,727,031. With our current county and city contributions, it brings the total contribution to $41,915,840. With our request for the 5% increase in the step, along with our health insurance increase of 10.5%, we are needing an additional $237,972 for our budget to make ends meet, with a total budget request of This slide shows our proposed budget and the breakdown of our categories where you can see the instruction, administration, transportation, or other categories with the uh, majority of our expenses, of course, going to instruction. And to the Greensville County School Board, um, that concludes our presentation on the fiscal year 2023 budget. And again, I echo the highlights. The highlights are, we are planning to pursue the 5% pay increase for all employees plus a step. Highlight insurance is going up 10.5%. Highlight, we're looking for construction efforts as appropriated by the state so that we can assist our buildings with some up need, some very needed upgrades coming in fiscal 2023. And we definitely, definitely thank our appropriating bodies as we move forward. And we look forward to making our presentation to the appropriating bodies later on in this month. And so at this time um, to the board, we open it up for any questions and that concludes our presentation. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Does anybody from Thank the you. public got any questions or comments concerning the budget? I have one, Mr. Root, if no public. Yes, ma'am. Um, regarding the ADM, yes. are we still in the whole harmless where we don't? Uh, we aren't penalized for losing students. Currently, um, Ms. Jones, yes, we are. Okay. Um, the question was, are we in the com the mode of being held harmless um, for right now? And we were being held harmless to 2018 when our enrollment was above 2000. So we are still being held harmless, which definitely helps us. But as we prepare this budget, we are basing the budget preparation on 1,900 students. So yes, ma'am, the answer to your question, we are still being held harmless for at least one more year. Okay, and regarding insurance, you said we had to look at the 85-15 split more closely? Yes, ma'am. We would get our final numbers from the local choice, um, which is who we partner with. And once we get those numbers, um, we bring bringing those numbers to the board. Any other questions? Mr. Chair. The budget? All right, since there are no other questions, that concludes the public hearing part of the meeting.
right. I'm now seeking approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting as presented. Second. Motion on the floor, and probably a second to accept the minutes from the last meeting. All in favor, make a known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being heard. Minutes from the last meeting are approved. All right, we have one addition to the agenda we need to add, which would be D1. Let's move it to E1. Approval in the agenda. E1. Yeah, E1. And that being E1, be a special closed session to discuss some matters with city school board members. All right, now seeking approval of the agenda as presented with the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion's been moved and properly seconded to accept the agenda. With the addition, all in favor, make a known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being heard, the agenda is approved. All right, seeking a motion to go into special closed session to discuss the matters with six board members. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to the Virginia State Code to discuss matters that will fall under that code. Second. Motion has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, make a known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being heard. Normally, a closed session. We ask y'all to step out, but we're going to step out since there's so many of y'all tonight. We shouldn't be very long. If you just bear with us a few minutes, we'll be right back with you.
I'd like to call the meeting back to order. Coming back in from closed session. Can I get a motion to go back into open session? So move. Second. Motion moved and properly seconded to go back into open session. All in favor, make it known by saying aye. 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 All opposed. None being heard. We're back in open session. Now seeking approval for the warrants and financial information. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the warrants and financial information as presented. Second. Motion has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, make a known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being heard, motion carries. All right, we're up to the public comment section. Any citizen may address the board and any regular meeting person wishing to appear before the school board. I requested to contact the superintendent or the school board chair or they designate for placement on the agenda. The chairman is responsible for the conduct of the meeting and shall rule on such matters as appropriate of the subject being presented and in the length of time of such presentation. No one is allowed. To make. To make. <laughs> to make additional presentations until everyone has the opportunity to make an initial presentation. You'll be allowed three minutes if you wish to make public comment. I may open the floor for public comments. We do not have any, sir. All right, moving right along. Update on the corrective action plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to get the update pulled up on the screen if possible. Before you is a corrective action plan update that, um, as you all know, we are under the memorandum of understanding with the, the Virginia Department of, of Education. And during my, the, the CAP update, we are required to report on it monthly. And so this is the CAP update that I would like to present um, for the month of March. Under academics and student success, and which it states that all students will be engaged in rigorous, innovative, and meaningful activities to be better prepared when they enter college or the workplace. Um, our secondary school counselors met with the Office of School Quality, and that was Beverly Britt on on-time graduation rate. Um, we had benchmark assessment session on March the 7th, review of benchmarks, pacing guides, and also to follow up under the academic review, um, we're looking at the restructuring of our lesson plans for our teachers throughout the division. The elementary instruction focus meeting, once again, was held on February the 28th. And we also, under the CAP, we are submitting this coming March the 21st, a progress meeting that will happen as we do individual meetings in the following areas, human resource, leadership and governance, student and academic success, and also under our, under our operations. Under leadership and governance, where it says establish a clear mission and vision statement with corresponding goals to implement policies and procedures to provide the direction of the school division. I've had the pleasure of meeting with the VSBA on the superintendent evaluation process, participated in weekly principal coaches professional learning community meetings, participating in GES staffing meetings with the executive HR director and the principal, facilitated the principal coaches, principal leadership academy, along with the principal coaches. Also attended the Praxis workshop, where we're looking forward to getting all our teachers who have a provisional license fully certified. Also um, had a meeting with Dr. Dance for division personnel study, participated in summer planning learning session. We're looking forward to bringing EPIC and the Power Scholars program back this summer, along with acceleration here at the high school. 
Work with the executive leadership forward thinking professional learning community, schedule training for budgeting for the school board members, and we've been looking forward to having a date. Under operation and services, the principal coaches facilitated the principal leadership academy. We also participated in a division wide book study by Danya, Dr. Danielle Dickey. The superintendent and the transportation supervisor met to discuss transportation department, and we also met with school nutrition on changes weekly purchase order review, and also weekly, weekly budget meetings. And so at this time, this concludes the corrective action plan update for the month of March. And each month, we'll be given an update as scheduled and by the requirements of the Memorandum of Understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. I move to the next item on the agenda, instructional update secondary. All right, at this time, I would like to call Mrs. Namika Harrison forward, and she'll present our instructional spotlight on Greensville County High School. And this month we'll be doing secondary only. Next month we'll do elementary. Mrs. Harrison, thank you. You and your team. Good evening. Dr. Edwards, Chairman Work and members of the board, I will be sharing with you all this evening our assessment results from first semester, our SOL results, as well as our second semester first benchmark. As I proceed to talk about these results, I ask that you please look at these as an opportunity for growth and success as we return to in-person learning from a period of learning loss. For biology, the pass rate is a 29.1%. The state goal is 70%. Opportunities for growth. History, the pass rate is a 32.3%. State proficiency level, 70%. For math, the pass rate for first semester, 61.7%. We're getting closer and closer to that state goal of 70%. For English, our overall pass rate is, hold on, go to the right slide, 92.3%. State goal is 75%. So that is indeed a celebration for us in English 11. And this is just a breakdown of English even more because the English assessment consists of reading and writing. So reading a standing alone is a 72% close to the state average of 75. Moving right along to our first benchmark that we just began to administer on last week. So when you're looking at the breakdown of our tiers, students are categorized as a tier one, tier two, or tier three. Tier one is proficient. They score between 100 and a 70. Tier two, the cutoff is from a 69 to a 50. Tier three are the students that, would, that need the greatest assistance, um, scoring a zero to a 49%. So when we're looking at our scores for biology in tier one, we have 22 students who passed, which equates to a 21%. Tier two, 31 students passed, 30%. Students in tier three, 49 students and 48 percent. We look at our tier one and two combined. The difference between a tier one and two could be a couple of questions that'll bump a student from a tier two up to a tier one. So we look at that as our bubble students that we anticipate getting over the hump. Those two combined would be a 52 percent. Chemistry. We have tier one. 10 students, 76.9%. Tier two, we had one student there, 7.7%. Tier three, two students, 15.4%. Tier 
tiers one and two combined, 84.6%. Those are our two tested subjects in science. Moving on to history, world one. In tier one, 26.3%. Tier two, 23.8%, which would be 19 students. Tier three, 40 students, 50%. We look at tiers one and two combined, 50% pass rate. World history. World two, 17 students who tested, 100% of the students fell in tier one. Celebration number two. Yeah. Virginia US history, tier one, we had one student, 2.9%. Tier two, 13 students, 38.2%. Tier three, 20 students, 58.8%. Tiers one and two combined, 41.2%. Moving along to math in algebra one, tier one, five students, 29.4%. Tier two, five students, 29.4%. Tier three, seven students, 41.2%. Tiers one and two combined, 58.8%. Algebra one, part two, tier one, five students, 11.9%, 12 students, 28.6%. Tier three, 25 students, 59.5%, tiers one and two combined, 40.5%. Algebra two, tier one, 12 students, 54.5%, Tier two, seven students, 31.8%. Tier three, three students, 13.6%. Tiers one and two combined, 86.4%. 86.4%. Celebration number three. For geometry, tier one, four students, 50%. Tier three, three students, I'm sorry, tier two, three students, 37.5%. Tier three, one student, 12.5%. Tiers one and two combined, 87.5%, 87.5%. Celebration number four. All right, moving along to um, English. We shared, decided to share our benchmarks for English nine and 10 because they lie the foundation to prepare our students for English 11. For English 11 is the only English that is tested um, according to state standards. So with English 9, opportunity for growth, we have in tier one, four students, 7%. Tier two, 13 students, 28.8%. Tier three, 40 students, 70.2%. Tiers one and two combined, 29.8%. English 10, tier one, seven students, 25.9%. Tier two, 12 students, 44.4%. Tier three, eight students, 29.6%. Tiers one and two combined, 70.4%. English 11, which is our tested subject. In tier one, eight students, 40%. Tier two, six students, 30%. Tier three, six students, 30%. Tiers one and two combined, 70%. And um, on tomorrow, we will start our assessing for English 11 with our writing work keys where we anticipate great success on that. Our writing work keys is an alternative assessment that is approved by the state that we use towards our accreditation purposes for English 11. So as you see the data that we share, there are great opportunities for success. So I just wanna take a moment to share some things that we started to do second semester as we looked at our results from first semester. We adjusted our pacing guides to make sure that we um, spent 
adequate time on those subjects and categories that cover the most standards. We made adjustments to our student schedules to change them from biology to environmental to allow them an opportunity to be better prepared for the biology assessment. We conducted professional development on lesson plan alignment and started to incorporate the instructional resources from the Department of Education, which are aligned with the content. Become more intentional with the incorporation of cooperative learning, opportunities for students to learn from each other. The use of manipulatives to engage students, math tiles, individual whiteboards, just to name a couple. The administrative team continues to conduct our lesson plan reviews and our walkthroughs with timely and specific feedback from what we're seeing occurring in the classes. Early identification of those students that will be testing for this semester, that allows us to pinpoint how many we need to be able to reach our goal for this school year. Use our data to reteach and accelerate our students by strand and also reassess those students along the way. Continue to provide extra help opportunities, after school tutorial, planning pullbacks, in school remediation, our Saturday academies. And so we're asking parents that are here today and that are listening, please, please join us and partner with us to encourage your student to take advantage of all of these opportunities for success. We incorporate peer teaching and tutoring provide opportunities for teachers to observe other teachers for um, instructional best practices. And we collaborate with our community partners and retired teachers, inviting them in to assist our staff and students as we work as a community to increase student achievement for all. So I just wanna end with some champ power and some eagle pride. So we will see on the top left will be our students that created a STEM lab. We call them our junior scientists. So if we have any other students that are interested in participating, you can um, please let us know. And we can put you in contact with Ms. Whitehead. In the middle, we have Kayla Easley for the best um, bulletin board. She's out of Ms. Mason's class, All Smiles. Mm -hmm. On the top right, you will see members of our beta club participating in the Celebration for Unity that's held on Thursdays at the Commons. And at the top, you will see, those are our math teachers. They participated in professional development called Math Teachers in Action Series on three Saturdays, just to improve their practices. On the bottom, you will see the mighty G-Force, you know that they participated in with great school spirit at the Central Woodstock basketball game. And I also, I think my picture got lost. I had a picture of our students that participated in our RILA competition. I just wanna give them a shout out, those that participated in the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. And I also wanna shout out Isaiah Stevens, who's here today. He participated in the track and field championship for AAU. And, and he didn't just participate, he brought home the silver for the shot put. So okay. congratulations. <laughs> and that includes the spotlight for Greensville County High School. Any questions? Uh, I'd like to congratulate you and your team for the work that you've done and celebrate the students for the hard work they put in. I was wondering how the student absent and the NDA number affects the tier one and two, tier two combined. They, they will definitely impact. Um, we started, we just tested last week and with us being out on Friday, then um, we are continued testing today. So those are not our final numbers. If we took and added in those students that did not test, then that would lower the um, the tiers. If we were assuming that they didn't pass, but I would assume that they they did pass. So right now, I just left them out. Okay, what's in the end? Didn't didn't finish. That they 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 started and did not finish. So we had some that it didn't they did not complete it within one class block. So they weren't completely absent but they did not complete the assessment. 
I'm just for the benchmark. So you don't count it if they don't complete it? If it's not submitted as of right now, yes, ma'am. Has that been your practice? Is that the best practice to not count it? They have the opportunity to do it again. How is that graded when they have? They have the opportunity to finish. So we have some students that it doesn't count until they've had the opportunity to make it up, but it doesn't drag on. So because we've only tested, started tested last week, we haven't configured those numbers into the data. So that would impact the overall data. So with them having the opportunity to test again today and tomorrow, then the true numbers will be available on Wednesday. You. You're welcome. Ms. Harrison, I would like to congratulate you on the progress considering COVID. I know it has been very difficult to overcome, but it's good to see that little by little, you are working and improving the academic achievement and celebrating those steps. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Our team's working hard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, thank you so much for presenting um, Greensville County High School Instructional Spotlight. And I also um, commend the team here at Greensville County High School for strides that are taking, especially learning loss as we get back to what we call a normal school day. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much because COVID has taken away so much. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Ms. Harrison, thank you, you and your team for what y'all done for us. Thank you, Chairman Rook. And continuing with our secondary um, instructional spotlight, like to call Dr. Carey um, to the podium, and he will go over um, Wyatt instructional data as well as their campus highlights. Good evening, everyone. We often have a little bit of friendly competition with the high school, so I would like for um, everyone that's a part of this Wyatt Middle School team, Southside Middle School championship teams, to please just stand up for a second. Because what we're gonna report on are these kids who have been in the classroom, and teachers as well, AP, Ms. High Jones, Nurse Scott, Dr. Chapman, Ms. Mallory, Ms. Sasky, yeah. those of you who are part of the white middle school team, want you to just stand up and get a little bit of a, a shine for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we have, uh, we're gonna report on white middle school as far as where we are uh, with our test scores. I am gonna speak to you briefly about um, benchmark three. Um, for the simple fact that we have less than 50% of our students who have taken this test. I want to show you guys um, benchmark number two. So for history and civics, um, those are semester courses. And so for grade eight, civics. Let me resend it to you. Just give one second, Doc. Ms. Ellis, did you get it? Can you try to upload it? Okay, I'll send it to you. Dr. Kerry, you wanna go ahead and just- start? Yeah, I was gonna say for the sake of time, I yes, could just read, read from what I have. And so we have, um, we have history and civics that I'm gonna report on. Um, this is a semester course. So these students have already, part, part of these, um, Students have already taken this SOL. Um, it's 22%. Uh, 
we know that we have opportunity for growth. Um, if we were to report on the benchmark, we would see a performance score right now of 69%. So that is, you know, there's, there's the, that's a celebratory moment. Although we have less than 50% of our kids who have tested, we know that once we get most of these kids um, testing for this next round, um, which is coming up for our SOL in the spring, we feel very much so confident that we should hit our proficiency score, which is 75%. But currently for SOL, fall semester is 22%. For reading, right now we're standing at an overall 74%. And again, we're reporting on our benchmark uh, number three. Um, we know that this information is, is, is not accurate because we have less than 50% of our scores will, that were reported. However, we understand that we have opportunities for growth and we're gonna talk about some of those plans that we have in place as we continue to move forward and give our students opportunities for acceleration within the classroom. Science is also a semester course. And right now we are looking at um, for science for grade eight, 42%. Again, opportunity for growth. We know that this spring semester, we have um, our students who are working hard. We have our teachers who are, are definitely working hard, giving our kids real world experiences, uh, science fairs, and opportunities to show and prove. Um, we're trying to eliminate so much lecturing and having the students show us what they know. So project-based learning is something that we're really pushing within our science classes. For math, overall, reported on this uh, benchmark, 48.5%. Again, a lot of opportunities for growth. But again, when we have our students who are digging out of the deficit from COVID, uh, we have a lot of our students who are not proficient in reading. And we understand that math, that plays hand in hand. And we know that they have to read um, word problems and things of that nature. But more importantly, we have teachers on tap to give them and provide them with the rigorous lessons that's needed to ensure that they have the mastery of the content. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing at White Middle School to change this narrative. We have remediation built in through our school day. We understand that um, if we can capture kids and hold them accountable throughout the school day, during after school, we fight with after school activities. Although we have 21st century learning, it is a pledge to our teachers that we provide them with rigorous instruction based off the non-mastery of standards. So we have our students during elective periods come back to have remediation for those standards based off of performance matters indicators where they have not performed proficiently. This is, this is shown to work tremendously on our campus. This is uh, research-based tactics that help improve learning across the board. We too have also made some changes to our data, to our lesson plans, um, looking at revamping our uh, pacing guides, having data, individual data meetings with our teachers, with our individual grade levels, and just making sure that they understand that how many kids do you need to move in your class, within your class set, in order to hit your proficiency scores. This is very much so important. This takes all of us on campus, not just our teachers, but it also takes our students to be a part of this transition process. So again, so parents, I wanna charge to you to encourage your students while they're in the school day to put the phone down to get that inf the information that's being presented by the teachers who are standing there giving everything they have to ensure that your children have an opportunity for growth. As we know, it's all about quality teaching and learning. And that's what we have to do at White Middle School. 
we want to talk to you a little bit about our reading proficiencies and why we have some of the deficits that we have. We have implemented various um, initiatives, strong leaders, strong readers campaign, dear, drop everything and read. And we know that has been met sometimes with a little bit of pushback. But again, we want to encourage our students and our parents. In order for us to hit our mark, please continue to push your students to come to school every day, on time, prepare for the school day. Again, the phones, the devices. I cannot tell you how much, how often we go into classrooms and we see that instruction is being lost because we have students on those, on those devices. We're a one-to-one -one school system. So unless that device is broken, there's no reason for them to have that device, that phone in their hands. So I, I, I charge parents here tonight, students here tonight, help us out with that. Leave the phone in your pocket. Help us out with these scores. Teachers are here to help you. Help us. It's all about teamwork in order for us to hit our, our scores and our marks. Attendance blitz. We know that it's very much so important for students to be in the seat, just as it's just as important for, for our teachers to be there, standing before our students to teach them. So we, when we have less than 50% of our students coming to take tests, it's kind of hard for us to report on assessments because we know that if we report on assessments that are inaccurate or we report on assessments that are not valid because we have, uh, we have students who have not had a chance to take these tests, the data is going to be skewed. The school day starts 7.25 a.m. Again, we're encouraging everyone to help us out, do your part, get the students there. We got it from there. If you can get them, get them there, get them to the schoolhouse, we have, we have Saturday Academies, the 19th, the 26th. It's virtual. We have links provided. Math, reading, history, and science from qualified teachers who are willing to give up from 9 to 12. Partial, part of their school day, well, part of their weekend, I'm sorry, 50 minutes to provide that extra support. When you look at our data, you see that we have a, a, a lot of students in tier three. We need to flip the narrative. We need the majority of those students from tier three going over to tier one. That's ultimately where we want them to be. What are we doing? Again, Panther intervention during the school day. We are hitting those kids with the non-master of those standards. But again, we are having some difficulties with our students attending those interventions. So while we have our parents here who we're about to celebrate for basketball championships, we want to also encourage you guys, it resonates from the hardwood to the classroom. Please support us in these initiatives. Thank you. Dr. Carey, thank you for, I'm sorry. At the final, the yes. best slide. Yes. <laughs> the fun stuff. So what you can see, to the, to the far left, uh, we have we, we gave our uh, staff breakfast on Friday, so we all took a picture. We're trying to you know, support our, our teachers. They work very hard. In the middle, we have the basketball championship, a little fun picture to our left, to our far right. At the bottom, we had some um, an activity for Black History Month where we um, had a door um, contest. This is just one of the many doors. In the, in the middle there, you have Coach Bass Knight, who, who just led the charge for our uh, Panther boys to an undefeated season. We celebrate their success last Thursday with a, a spaghetti dinner. And then to your far right, we have uh, T.C. Williams Foundation out of uh, Washington, D.C., who adopted Wyatt Middle School, and they gave us 30 pairs of sneakers to give to needy um, students. So. We have a lot of good things going on 
over at White Middle School, and we just encourage your support. We need your support. We need all parents, all teachers, all students on deck in order for us to hit our accreditation. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Carey, thank you, thank you to you and your team for bringing us the instructional and campus spotlight. Um, again, we know learning loss exists and your team is driving it home and we appreciate the forward progress that they're doing in making growth strides as we continue to come back to school from this COVID era. So to you, your team, and to the Wyatt faculty and staff, we thank you so much for presenting your data this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kerry. All right, we'll move right along, and I'd like to call this time Mr. Redman um, forward. And we have been talking about the component of the renovation of our district website. And so I'd like to Ms. Redman come and just give you a snapshot of what's to come when you click on www.gcpsthenumber1.com. Uh, Mr. Redman, take it away. Good evening, board chair, board members, Dr. Edwards. Um, I come before you I'm to provide some information on the upgrade and the renovation of our website. As Dr. Edwards said, you know, at this point, we, we're trying to go with a new look uh, when you go and click on gcps1.com. Um, currently in front of me, these are just snapshots of the actual sites. Um, the company that we're working with is Educational Networks. Um, they've been working in behind the scenes to try to get this, the, all of the school sites and the district site up and running. Um, even some of the stuff that you see on the TVs, that's some of the footage that they, that they uh, prepare for us and uh, from drone footage, from camera, um, from photography of the employees. And um, so they've been working in the background. We're currently waiting for them to actually build the website. They're working on that. Uh, so hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll actually have that up and going and we can transfer over to the new look. Um, what we have in front of us, this is gonna be the actual district site. Um, and again, this is just a snapshot, a, a proof of what, of what they're actually working on. All right, this is gonna be GES. Um, again, all the sites are gonna have the same template, okay? Um, and again, with these websites, it's gonna give us the flexibility where we can add video up in the, uh, as far as what a picture is, um, just better quality overall. All right, this is going to be Belfield, Wyatt, and this is going to be here at GHS. Um, again, this is just snapshots of what, what is to come. Um, I definitely say from the technology department, we are working to renovate and change and upgrade uh, this division. So. Is there any questions? All right. We thank you for being at 212 degrees, Ms. Evans, just like our teachers and staff. Thank you so much. All right. At this time, I would like to bring forward, and we have um, special recognitions under the superintendent's report. And this time, we want to bring this special recognition home because we know students, when they go to school all day, but there's a group of students that are student athletes. When the bell rings for the buses to come and take everyone home, our student athletes begin their second phase of their day. So imagine arriving at school at 7.08 a.m., 6.55 a.m. sometimes, and now you are in class till 2.20, 2.08, and now you gotta go to study hall, and now it's time to practice, okay? And so at this time, we want to recognize the accomplishments of our student athletes. And at this time, I'd like to start with um, E.W. Wyatt uh, Middle School and Af Athletic Director, Mr. Bass Knight. Mr. Bass Knight, would you come forward, please? Good evening. Good evening. Um, didn't know I was going to be speaking, but uh, 
stay ready. You don't got to get ready. That's there what you I go. said. That's exactly right. That's so, what Panthers uh, do. That's right. <laughs> Always. I will um, recognize my players. Um, like Dr. Kerr said, it was a tremendous and spectacular season. Our championship game really defined our season. It really could have ended no other way. Um, so, like Dr. Kerr said, we did go undefeated with 12-0. and 0. We brought home the middle school, Southside Middle School Conference Championship. We were also the Eastern Division um, champion as well. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll start by recognizing uh, my players that's here. Um, when I call your name, just simply stand and remain standing until the end. Um, started with Mr. J. Sean Baker. Next, we have Naheem Waller. Next, we have Jatavion Jones. Also recognizing one of the most important people on our staff, our manager, Mr. Jaden Gillis. Next, we have Mr. Tyron Bradley. Next, we have Mr. Patrick Brown. We have Antoine Lee, Isan Vaughn, and last but not least, we have Mr. Makai Phillips. Uh, we have a couple of other student athletes that are not here. We have um, Mr. Jamarion Odom, Mr. Kimon Brown, and Mr. Jamarion Walton. And we also miss the one, uh, Dejon Parker. Yes. So, um, like I said, these gentlemen, they uh, stepped up, accepted the challenge from day one. From day one, I told them we was chasing the ring. Uh, we fell short the season before last. We participated. But uh, some of these guys were hungry. They was on that last season. So uh, they accepted the challenge, took its team forward ahead, and um, blood, sweat, and tears, they're champions. Outstanding. And um, <laughs> excuse me, I have one more. My sixth grader, one of the only sixth graders on the team that he showed out. He's not here, but his name is uh, Mr. Demonte Powell. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Coach Bass Knight. Thank you to the young men, and thank you for coming. We certainly uh, applaud your accomplishments in the classroom because one of the things to be on the team, you got to be eligible. You got to be eligible. So that's where the academics and athletics bring it home. Yeah. So thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Going along with our special recognition, we would be remiss if we didn't go back to football. We just got off. I'd like to call Mr. Andre Ellis, and he's going to take us to um, our football champion our girls, and our boys' basketball team. Mr. Ellis, thank you. Board chair, uh, school board, Dr. Edwards, the best principal in GCPS. You know, I'm, I'm going to say it. You know, I, since we since we competing and everything, since we're competing, got to shout out Mrs. Harrison and the admin team here, all the faculty and staff that are here today. But I did want to take the moment um, and, you know, Dr. Edwards made a request, and this is one that I have no problem fulfilling, is speaking about the, the accolades of, of these fine student athletes that we have at Greensville County Public Schools. Um, first, I would like to have the football team, those who are here, those who, those who played on the football team, please stand, please stand. These young men, uh, thank you. these young men um, did an outstanding job this year. As I spoke to you about um, earlier in the year, um, 
these young men faced adversity. This was our first season having to deal with COVID issues and being quarantined and taking a pause in the middle of the season. And I just had to uh, just, just, just echo the things that Dr. Edwards has been saying because they are the Tri-Rivers District Champions for 2021. Yes. They are also, just know, hold on, oh, oh, we got more, we got more. They are the back-to-back -back Tribe Rivers champions. Oh. They were the champions before COVID, and they were the champions after COVID, okay? We also landed six players on first team all district. We landed six players on second team all district, and three players for honorable mention. And those are our individual accolades for Greensville County High School football. Yeah. Now we can clap for them. Now we, now we can clap for them. Those, those guys did an outstanding job. They represented Greensville County well as they competed in the region. They got another regional berth, and we ran up against a really good team in King William who um, got the best of us that night, but they went on to be the state champions. So uh, Greensville, we, we, though we came up second in that game, I feel like we came in second in the state now. <laughs> Those guys did an outstanding job, and we look forward to another season. Pictured there in the back is our starting quarterback, Mr. Jaden White. I saw him in here somewhere. There, there he is. Did an outstanding job for those Eagles. And then he took his pads off and put a basketball in his hand. And uh, so at this time, hit that next one. Um, I didn't know that if Mr. Bass Knight was going to speak or not. I should have known he would. But I did want to shout out uh, EWI Middle School Basketball Team because that's our future. Yeah. Those young men are coming over to Greensville County High School. That's our future. And it's very important that we recognize that when we're trying to build programs, it starts at the lower levels. So for me to talk about the high school, I had to mention the middle school. And you guys did an outstanding job. It was my pleasure to come to your games and watch you play as you were undefeated in their, in their season. So when, as we move on to basketball, I would like to talk about the individual honors for first team all district for boys basketball. We have Mr. Xavion Franklin, <laughs> Xavion Walton, second team Isaiah Stevens, he's in the house. Honorable mention, Mr. Cedric Wilkins. Now, I don't know why you sat back down, sir. Stand up, because they got to recognize you for this. This is the Tri Rivers District Player of the Year. <laughs> Mr. Xavion Franklin. And coach of the year is Greensville's own Mr. Antoine Walton. He was the Tribe River District coach of the year. He, is, he was not able to be with us tonight. But we do have Coach Anderson in the building. Coach Anderson in the building helped to lead these young men. And as we shift to girls basketball, we're going to come back to the boys. We're going to shift. Uh, first team all district, Miss Shania Brooks. First team all district, Miss Kaylin Kales. Second team all district, Miss Aaliyah Webb. I know I saw her somewhere. Uh uh, stand up. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You're going to get all this shine tonight. And honorable mention, Dakaya Atkins. Now, girls basketball were the regular season Tri-Rivers District Champions and Tournament Champions. That's right. Those ladies went on, went on to play in regional play. They ho we hosted games here at Greensville County High School. Ladies, I'm so proud of you. They even allowed me to join them in their celebration on Friday <laughs> to celebrate all of their accomplishments. Uh, we're going to shift because now that we're talking about region, now that we're talking about regional play, we got to talk about the boys and their accomplishments as they went on to the region. But before we shift, let's talk about Aaliyah Webb. Stand up again. Stand up again. She was second team all district, but she stepped up in the region and was first team all region for 2A. 
also all region, we had Mr. Xavion Franklin again, leading the boys. We had Mr. Xavion Walton, first team all region. And uh, here's a shot of our outstanding Lady Eagles basketball team. Yeah. Had to put that in there. And come back to the boys team. Regional play. We were the Region 2A runners up to John Marshall High School, who eventually went on to be the state champion. And we also qualified for the state tournament. We won the quarterfinals and we were semifinalists, which means we were the state final four for the state tournament. This is no small, this is no small accomplishment. Can I have all of you young men stand up, please? All of my young ladies stand up, please. Your hard work, your hard work did not go unnoticed because as Dr. Edwards said, you had to get it done not only on the court, but in the classroom as well. And these young men and young ladies did an outstanding job in the classroom as well. And that should be a that should be applauded because, as Dr. Edwards said, it is the extra degree of effort that makes all the difference in the world. Thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Ellis, thank you so much, and um, and we we certainly applaud our student athletes. And and Mr. Ellis, I know you were saving this for last because we we must remember it is Women's History Month. And now looking at who led those Lady Eagles, I might have missed this. But um, g could you give us a a a, a a a a a stance on who led those ladies when it came to coach? Coach, coach, know I get excited, man. You know, I'm a man of few words, very few words. Right. <laughs> well, coach, know I get excited, and I, and I am, and I, I do apologize, but I do need these two uh, young ladies to stand up. And yeah, I said young ladies. They did, they did an outstanding job leading our Lady Eagles. They, the Lady Eagles, they they only lost two during the season. Their uh, last loss was on January the 7th, and they led these ladies through two quarantine periods and did not lose a game until the regional playoffs. Yeah. Coach Sharon Manning Randolph and Coach Esther Small, I applaud you. And I know y'all gonna get me in the morning, but that's okay. I love y'all and you know that, and you know it. Once again, thank you so much, and we applaud all our student athletes. I want to just um, look at, we're just coming off Black History Month, and now we want to celebrate in the month of March, the women, Women's History Month, the accomplishments of women to this wonderful Virginia Commonwealth and also throughout the nation. And so I would like to ask at this time if Mrs. Riddick would please come forward to read Governor Yunkin's proclamation for Women's History Month as we celebrate Women's History Month for the month of March. To the chairman of the board, school board members, Dr. Edwards, colleagues, students, and guests, good evening. Before good evening. I read the proclamation, I would like to ask all women and young ladies in the audience to please stand with me. Beautiful. Gentlemen, let's give these ladies a hand as they are in our community. <laughs> Certificate of recognition by virtue of the authority vested by the Constitution of Virginia. You're supposed to be standing with me. And the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there is right. hereby officially recognized Women's History Month. Whereas, Women's History Month is an important opportunity for Virginians to pause and honor the profound contributions that women pioneers and trailblazers have made towards safeguarding the freedoms we hold so dear. 
Virginia is a beacon of liberty built by millions of patriotic and often unsung women. Women have served and shaped the Commonwealth in the workplace, the home, and the war front. And whereas the quiet courage and immense sacrifice of women tells the story of Virginia's history, Martha Washington, the nation's inaugural first lady, was born in the Commonwealth and is often remembered for her leadership in the support of the Revolutionary War by calling women to provide resources. Many historical accounts of pioneers, trailblazers, and groundbreaking women contribute to our so strong foundation and American values, scientific achievement, and entrepreneurship. And whereas pioneers in women's suffrage, such as Richmond, Richmond native Lila Mee Valentine, paved the way for women to vote and blazed the trail for women to hold public office. The passion of Valentine and many others opened the door for the strong presence of women serving in our General Assembly. And whereas some women, while not included in the pages of a history book, have made contributions no less vital, civic leader and social reformer Orr E. Brown Stokes from Chesterfield County worked tirelessly for a woman's right to vote and receive an education. Today, women constitute the majority of the student population at Virginia colleges and universities. Through strengthening and enriching society by impacting every field from business to medicine, to government to the arts, women continue to nurture the family while fueling innovation as well as the growth and success of tomorrow's leaders. And whereas we remember the legacy and work of Katherine Johnson, a dynamic American mathematician who spent her 33-year career at NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton. Johnson calculated the precise trajectories that should allow the successful landing of the Apollo 11 on the moon in 1969. And whereas, I encourage all Virginians to join me in appreciating the past, present, and future contributions of women in the Commonwealth. We must empower future generations of women leaders and innovators while honoring their contributions to our Commonwealth across all fields, both inside and outside the home. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, salute the First Lady of the Commonwealth, Suzanne Youngkin, and all women who have held this position and do hereby recognize March 2022 as Women's History Month in the Commonwealth of Virginia as a part of our observance that honors the history and achievements of women in Virginia and across America. Signed, Governor Glenn Youngkin. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ms. Rick. And we celebrate all women in Women's History Month. Thank you. I want to bring forth a special team that's here in Greensville County Public Schools. And when you talk about um, being at 212, which is what we stress and echo, um, this team exemplifies that, as many of our teams do. But this is their day, and I want to recognize the maintenance staff here in Greensville County Public Schools. Um, maintenance Workers Day was just held, and we want to recognize our staff. So at this time, Ms. Riddick, um, I would like to call our staff forward, and they consist of Ms. Mr. Winningham. I give you the honors of introducing the staff for the men that you um, um, work with daily. And Mr. Young, yes. to steal the mic and say a couple words. Uh, give an honor to the school board, our school board chair, uh, Dr. Edwards, Ms. Riddick, and everyone who's in attendance here tonight. Uh, when we talk about heroes, often we talk about the people who are on the forefront that we can actually see, but these guys are heroes on a daily basis. They impact almost every venue or every interaction that we have within the buildings of Greensville County Public Schools each and every day. And many times when we come into a warm building, we don't think to thank uh, our staff for what they do on a regular basis. Even when we come in and we see a nice colorful wall, we don't tend to thank them for what they do. Even all these chairs and things that we're sitting on, they put countless hours in to make sure they're sturdy and they're safe for us. So I just want to commend them on the job that they do each and every day. And Mr. Winham, thank you so very much for your contribution. If you would call your staff, we're on. Thank you, board, for allowing us to be here tonight. Um, my guys make my job as easy as you can make it. Um, I never have to ask my guys more than once uh, to do something. Matter of fact, most of the time I don't even have to ask them. They just do it. Uh, 
they go above and beyond every day in their job. Uh, they don't know how much I appreciate them. I tell them all the time, but it's still not enough. So as I call your name, guys, please step forward. Corey Clayton. Corey. Johnny Phillips. Harvey Cyphers. Harvey is new to my team, but uh, he has just came and fit right in, and he has became a, an asset that you wouldn't believe. And David Fadoon is not here. He wasn't feeling well today and went home early, so he is not here tonight, so I will accept this in his honor. And again, I'd like to thank my staff for all that they do on every day that they come in. They come in this morning. I made one phone call. We had an issue at the elementary school. They were there at six, a little after six this morning, uh, just so the building would be warm when the students came in. Uh, so, like I said, again, every day they put forth the effort. So I do thank them. Mr. Winningham. first started the school year off, there were faded lines. And just to highlight some of the work that these men have done, you go to every camp and you see faded lines, okay? And that calls to exactly what it calls. <laughs> if it, if I had to you know, what you said. You, you put a vision, these, these young men see it through. If you look at public schools, you'll see 212 degrees in front of every building. Who did it? This staff did. So when I tell you there's 212 degrees, look at their hotel. They are already there. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. At this time, it is National School Social Worker Week. A lot of celebrations in March. I'd like to call Ms. Rita Williams forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. Chairman Rook, Dr. Edwards board member. Uh, we celebrated School Social Work Week the week of um, March 6th through the 12th which was last week. Uh, so I did celebrate Ms. Dunn. Ms. Dunn is a phenomenal school social worker. This also is yes. National School Social Work Month. <laughs> National School Social Work Month observed throughout the, throughout the month of March, uplift the social workers of our country and celebrate their constant contributions to our society. These professionals use psycho psychology and sociology to solve social issues and improve individuals' lives, and it is not an easy task. Social work can be emotionally draining, requiring long hours, yet still the superhumans strive every day to improve many students' quality of life and people and advocate on their behalf. So I would like for you to join me in thanking our school social worker. Uh, she's also our homeless, foster care and truancy liaison who works tirelessly, calls me in the evening and asks Ms. Dunn to stop working. Put the phone down, we're gonna start back tomorrow. But I would like to let Ms. Dunn know that I really appreciate everything that she do. She advocates for children, she hits the ground running, home visits, telephone, stay on the phone all day, trying to help a student. That's what she's here for and she does her job well. Congratulations, Ms. Dunn. Thank you for all the work that you do. And I have to echo Ms. Williams, uh, Ms. Dunn works tirelessly. Um, when you look at the community, some of the community issues that we face always at the forefront, Ms. Williams, you and Ms. Dunn and the team, me, 
do a fine job of making sure our students get what they need. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now I'd like to just come to our end of our special recognitions and just look at our local heroes, our local heroes, homegrown initiative. And what is our homegrown initiative? We want to celebrate all faculty and staff that came back to Greensville County Public Schools. Um, you, you have many places to go, but you came back home. And what a special, special time when you say you come back home to help the next group of young people lead their educational endeavors and you are at the forefront of that. So Mrs. Riddick, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to you as we look at our Greensville County High School alumni, also our Central Service alumni, and also Wyatt Middle School. And in the next month, we're gonna celebrate our elementary school alumni that all went to Greensville County High School and graduated and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention also E.W. Wyatt because there were some graduates that are still in the working ranks that we are finding that went to E.W. Wyatt when it was a high school. So, Mrs. Reddy, please take, a, take charge for our local heroes. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Um, William Arthur Ward said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it. It's like wrapping a gift and not giving it. So tonight we want to say thank you to some very special people. Life in the HR world has not been easy in the midst of a critical teacher shortage and resignations that come every other week, sometimes two a week. However, when Dr. Edwards and I sat down to look at our resignations and the attrition data, we talked about a little bit why people leave. And then we realized we may focus too much on why people leave us. So we decided to start focusing on and the best way for us to retain teachers is to focus on those who stay with us those who return to us and then support those teachers. And we would like to call those people, as he said, our local heroes. So tonight, our local heroes are coming from EWI at Middle School, Greensville County High School, and the Central Office. And I would like to ask Dr. Carey, Mrs. Harrison, to please come forward so that you can shout out your staff while we give them their certificates. So before we get started, I just want to say again, thank you on behalf of the school board members and Dr. Edwards. We want to say thank you guys, especially for hanging in there with us tonight. Thank you for returning home. Thank you for all the things you do to support the kids that, that you serve each and every day. And thank you so much for partnering with us as we make a difference in Greensville County Public Schools um, at 212 degrees tonight you are going to be the lucky recipients of your 212 lapel pin. Okay, leaving the charge for E.W. Wyatt Middle School. Ashley Johnson, class of 2007. Heather Callahan Lackey, class of 1994. Hey. Mercedes Mallory, class of 2014. Abigail King Sasky, class of 2015. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Felicia Robinson Scott, also known as Nurse Scott, class of 1984.
Natalia Ferguson, class of 2006. <laughs> Zell Bullock, class of 1975. <laughs> Simone Whitaker, class of 1994. Gabrielle Tyler Powell, class of 2010. Yaro Omar Smith, class of 1990. Akeem Allen, class of 2015. And last, Miss Ava Young, class of 1992. Congratulations, guys. Chapman. Dr. Chapman. Okay, come on. And Dr. Adrian Chapman, class of 1989. <laughs> Dr. Chapman didn't put a name on this list. <laughs> All right, we got everyone. Thank you guys. Great job. Class of 1973, the queen of GCHS, Miss Judy F. <laughs> isn't she lovely? Yes, isn't she lovely? The class of 1983, Moselle Rose. <laughs> class of 1987, Sharon Manning Randolph. Class of 1991, Dr. Anjanette Stiff. <laughs> Class of 1994, Sharon Webb. <laughs> the class of 2002, Brad Barber. <laughs> Class of 2003, Sierra Carr. <laughs> Class of 2011, Shanae Sykes. Tim Sloan was with us earlier, and he was class of 2006. And that's all we have with us tonight, but many more that graduated from the class of Greensville County High School. Let's hear it for the Eagles.
Our local hero, heroes from the central office, we have Ms. Cynthia Whitaker, class of 1991. Ms. Whitaker is at a conference today. Class of 1989, Ms. Belinda Astrop. Class of 2010, Ms. Lanisha Dunn. <laughs> Class of 1975, Ms. Denise Avent. I saw her. She she Class of 1997, Ms. Leah Hardy. Class of 1990, Miss Latina Gibbons. Mm -hmm. Class of 1974, Miss Aletha Kane. The class of 1993, Miss Mary Lou Phelps. Ooh. Oh, okay, Miss Phelps. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the class of 2010, Miss Amber Barber. Once again, we want to just echo how appreciative we are that people come back home to help their community. And there's no better local hero than those that come back to serve. So thank you in this first round as we recognize EW wide staff, um, Greensville County High School staff, and also the Central Service staff, because it takes a great team and we certainly appreciate you all coming back. And um, Ms. Phelps, uh, I think your chilling skills are still there. Awesome. <laughs> We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, moving right along to action items. Uh, first up is the policy adoption for alternative paths to attaching standard units of credit, attaining standard units of credit that we tabled last week. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we um, adopt the policy as presented. Second. Motion on the floor and second to adopt the new policy. All in favor, make a no by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being heard. Motion carries. May I seek an approval of the draft budget? Will we get um, the final? Budget. Yes, sir, you will. But this is so that we can move forward in the process. Yes, sir. Yeah. And remember those contributing factors to the board. We do not have the governor's proposed budget. And we're still waiting um, a few more updates as it relates to our ADM, which will come back on March 31st. But as you know, we are presenting to the city and the county on March the 29th.
I move that we um, accept the uh, approval, well, that we approve the draft budget with the correction as noted yes, earlier. Second. The motion's been moved and probably second to accept the draft budget. All in favor, make it known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Now I'm being heard, the budget draft is adopted. All right, now brings us to the closed session part. Um, seeking a motion to move to end the closed session to discuss, consider, or interview prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the school board pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1. Mr. Chair, I move that we go into closed session pursuant to the Virginia Code. Second. Motion's been moved and probably seconded. All in favor, make a note by saying aye. 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 All opposed? None being here when they're in closed session. Thank y'all for coming. Ms. Bob.
All right, we're now back in open session. Uh, Clerk, could you call to certify? Chairman Jason Rook. Yes. Vice Chairperson Janet Roberts. Yeah. Attorney Rhonda Jones Gilliam. Yes. Mr. Rustin Jesse. Yes. All right. Recommendations for personnel matters for closed session? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, administration recommends approval for the personnel agenda as presented in closed session. So moved. Second. Motion to move, probably seconded to accept the recommendations for personnel matters for closed session. All in favor, make a normal saying aye. Aye. All opposed? None being heard. Recommendations for closed session are passed. Uh, are there any announcements before we adjourn? Oh, you want to tell them about that briefly? I do. Oh, yes, indeed. I was going to wait to see if the board has I do want to share with the board um, as we look for continuous improvement um, on our vehicles, what you will see is the Greensville County Public Schools logo on every vehicle that transports students. And this will be in the form of a magnet. So for maintenance that it doesn't peel the paint off, but this was the um, design model. And we're looking forward to these emblems being on all of our vehicles. We'll be identifying marks for our parents when students are being picked up, as well as our drivers full-time and part-time having um, IDs so that parents know that they are a bona fide employee of the school system. One of our ways is we work toward continuous improvement. Also, um, we early in the fall, we talked about the edu, EduLog. The EduLog is a system that lets parents know where the buses are. So in the case that they want to say, hey, where's the bus? Is the bus running late? Parents can just tap the app and they can see the bus on Main Street or if the bus is still at Belfield, Greensville Elementary, Wyatt, or the high school, which eases a lot of tension when it comes to parents about knowing when a bus is late. It tracks the bus in real time and shows it just like a GPS. And we're looking forward to bringing that in the month of April, as well as the many upgrades when it comes to touchless faucets, touchless urinals, and all things touchless as it comes to sanitation when it comes to the restrooms and even our water fountains. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. All right, no other announcements. I'm uh, seeking a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion to move and proper second to adjourn. All in favor, make a normal saying aye. Aye. All opposed? None being heard. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you to the board.